Good evening, Jay from Great Scott Audio Productions for Bitten by Books, Book Bites, uh, another reading we're doing this evening. And we're going to be reading from Strange Angels by Lily St. Crow. The series itself is her YA series. It's absolutely wonderful. I really, really recommend you go out and grab this one. We're going to start a little early in on Chapter 2. Um, the story itself is a lot of fun. We're going to talk, uh, talk to Drew and a fellow she just met named Graves. I got home a little after five, riding the jolting, bumping bus all the way from downtown. Graves had wanted me to hang around and shoot a few more games, but the place, an all-ages pool club with a jukebox and indoor basketball and tennis courts, was loud and full of funky smells, as well as being jammed with kids who should have been in school themselves. So I bailed and had to figure out the bus. I'm used to figuring out the public transportation in just about any part of America, and this place actually had a good system. Dad's truck was gone, but he'd left the light on in the kitchen and a $50 bill next to a note. Don't wait up. Order pizza. Homework before TV, kiddo. And do your katas. Love you, Dad. Other dads actually sat at the dinner table. Mine left me a 50 and a reminder to do my goddamn takatas. I was cold anyway, so I dropped my bag in the kitchen and bashed my way out into the garage, the big broken spring door rattling as the wind teased at it. The heavy bag creaked, swaying a little, but I shucked my coat and shivered in the middle of the concrete floor instead. Dad liked karate, and he was a big enough that it was a good choice for him. But I'm built rangy, like my mom, except she had nice chest works and a pretty curve to her hips. I'm just angles, except for the breasticles, which are more trouble than they're worth, especially when it comes to boys. I don't have the kind of muscle mass you need to meet a punch with direct force. So for me, it's Tai Chi, and what Dad called the basic dirty fighting when he was sober, and six ways to bounce an asshole when he'd had a few beams. I like Tai Chi. I like the slow way each movement flows into the next, and the breathing smooths everything out. It's still hard work because your knees always have to be a little unlocked, and after a while it really murders your quads and hamstrings, but it's nice. Push, pull, part the horse's mane, catch the swallow's tail. Warmed up and loosened and feeling a little better, I finally inhaled and exhaled, as close to at peace as I guess you can ever get. The outside world rushed in as soon as I opened my eyes, and I began worrying about Dad again before I even opened the door to the kitchen and stamped through, making a lot of noise I really didn't have to. It's the only way to fill up an empty house. I dug through the fridge and eventually settled on a bowl of Cheerios. I, I'd scarfed a greasy slice of pizza at the pool hall, and the thought of more half-cardboard cheese didn't appeal to me, even with pepperoni. So I wolfed the cereal, spiked a glass of Coke with some of Dad's Jim Beam, and wandered up to my room to lie on the bed and look at the light on the ceiling. Every room is different, and on the way outside, like... Excuse me. Every room is different, and the way outside light reflects up onto the sp spackle stuff smeared on most ceilings is unique. I could probably describe pretty much every place we've ever we'd ever lived in terms of ceiling light. The worst part about Dad being out on hunting runs was the way whatever house we were in got really creepy around dusk. Night is when most of the stuff in the real world comes out to play. And by play, you can mean have a little fun, go grocery shopping because sunlight burns like acid, or make unweary people disappear yum yum. Take your pick. I pulled Mom's red and white quilt around me, snug as a bug in a rug, and sipped at the Coke until my taste buds burned off a little. I'd made it about half and half, and began to get a warm glow after a while. My clock blinked its little red eyes, and darkness gathered deeper and deeper in the corners. The wind made the glassed-in screen door on the enclosed back porch rattle. When we lived in apartments, 
I would pay the, play the game of listening to the sounds in the building as everyone came home and imagining the stories for all of them. Most apartment buildings aren't quiet if you're really listening. Hope you enjoyed it, and have a nice evening.